How's it going, everyone? My name is Patrick Donahoe, and I want to welcome you to tonight's video. Uh, I am I'm ecstatic uh, to be presenting this uh, this material for you. So what, what I'm going to do first is uh, just kind of explain wh why we're doing this video series, uh, what the what the objective is, and uh, and why you are, were invited. It's interesting over the last uh, kind of week and a half or so, we've had a a really cool response. And we purposely sent out kind of this ambiguous type of email announcing what we're going to be doing. And uh, so individuals would write back and say that they're excited and they you know, can't wait to hear what we're presenting. But then we also had a lot of other individuals say that, uh, oh, I guess what you were, wor were, uh, were doing wasn't working, so you're on to the next uh, financial strategy or next, uh, next big thing. And uh, so it, it was really interesting to get a lot of that, a lot of that feedback. And we, like I said, we on purpose did not, uh, did not send a lot of information about what we're about what we're doing. Uh, but since you're on tonight, you will uh, get a, a pretty good idea of what this uh, what this series is going to consist of. So it is a series. Uh, it's going to be probably four, maybe even five, five videos, and we're going to do them live probably every every couple of weeks. And we we just invited our database, so we didn't post this on. You know, a lot of social media stuff. We didn't post this to strangers. Uh, those of you who are here and were invited were either either clients of ours or at one point uh, looked at being a client. And uh, and, and so you're, you're in our database, and this is you know just something we wanted to, to try on with you. So what Paradigm is doing, we're, we're actually going to, um, we're going to be writing a book. And the, the name of the book is going to be uh, The Wealth Standard. And, uh, and so, but at the same time, we're, we're going to do a few other things in addition to that. So books these days are kind of, I don't know, they, the, the impact and the influence that they have, it, I guess, you know, is, uh, is, is really up to the individual to determine what type of influence it, it has on them. But we're not going to just do a book. We're going to do a book, and we're going to have a corresponding uh, e-learning e -learning program. So I'm going to first kind of write, write that here. So, so the book, and then, uh, and then the e-learning program. So most of you are are pretty familiar with our with our e-learning programs. Um, I got really big into this a, a few years ago, and I was influenced uh, by uh, Solomon Khan of the Khan Academy, and was fascinated by you know how he would uh, teach um, math principles, physics principles, and economic principles, and a whole other uh, slew of subjects. Uh, and most of you have probably heard of him through Bill Gates' uh, TED Talk. And uh, so it's a very, very, uh, very interesting way of teaching. And uh, so I started to really adopt uh, the way in which he used whiteboards and started to record videos and just got really big at uh, being able to explain things in a very short way uh, and have it for free on, uh, on the internet. And so some of you are aware of some of the programs we already have. Uh, the first one is absolutely free to anybody. It's called Infinite 101. It's on our webpage, www.paradigmlife.net. And you can register for free, have access to, to literally 20 to 30 hours of education. And, and it just introduces you to, to our philosophy, introduces you to Paradigm Life, introduces you to, to what we do. And so we saw a huge impact on this, this idea of e-learning uh, because it was a way in which individuals could really self-study and investigate a, a financial concept before they actually did something. Uh, I feel in our day and age, uh, the, the financial education that exists for Americans is, uh, is, is, is lackluster at best, and it's often done with, with some ulterior motive. And of course, we have a motive. I mean, we're a for-profit company. We sell things. Um, but we really want individuals to understand what we're, what we're doing and what they're doing, more importantly, uh, before they make a decision. And so we're really, we're really big on that. So the e-learning is going to be a, a very, very cool part of, uh, of this whole wealth standard. And then the third thing is, uh, is going to be kind of the mystery, the mystery thing, which I'm going to leave right to the end. Uh, but it's going to be a, a piece of technology. And like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that until the end. Uh, so this is kind of what I'm going to kind of go through tonight and just give you an idea of what we're doing. But here's what's awesome is you guys are all going to participate in this. What I mean by that is in, on YouTube, you can ask questions, you can make comments, uh, you can give testimonial. And what that's going to allow us to do is actually build this. Now, the reason why that's significant is because most authors, most uh, individuals that create systems and concepts and products such as this, they, they really create it and hope people will like it. 
uh, we're going to kind of go uh, the, the other way around. We're going to figure out really what individuals uh, are concerned about, what they're afraid of, what's worked, what hasn't worked, um, how they understand specific things. And these specific things, you know, the, what we're going to be teaching and talking about. Uh, and then their f your feedback is going to be huge for us. It's all going to be recorded, and then we're going to transcribe uh, a lot of that, a lot of that content, and we're going to uh, write a book out, out of it. And, uh, and I'm not sure how long the book is going to be, uh, but the book mainly is going to be conceptual in nature, summary in nature, and then we'll build a lot of the expla uh, explanation, a lot of the backend information on on the e-learning site. So your your participation is uh, is crucial, uh, not just on these live uh, these live videos, but also on YouTube, um, and then of course on our web page. So all of these videos will be housed uh, on the website www.thewealthstandard.com. And so in the email and the announcement, I think on YouTube as well, it has the URL. So we're going to embed the video that's being recorded tonight, and you guys can make uh, comments there. But what we're also going to do is, as we're kind of recording all these different videos, we're going to transcribe uh, the audio, we're going to start writing chapters, and we're going to post those chapters on there as well and, uh, and see what your feedback is. So most of you who are Rich Dad, Poor Dad fans uh, can remember a few years ago when Robert Kiyosaki had a collaborative effort in regards to his book, Conspiracy of the Rich. And it was, it was fascinating to me to see how he wrote that book. And he did it very similar to what we're doing here. Um, so that, that's basically why you're on right now and, uh, and kind of what, what's, uh, what I would like and love, especially if you're a client, if you uh, are really excited about this and passionate about it as we are, um, what, you know, what you want to see, what were your main hangups, what were the hurdles, and that's going uh, to be huge for us. Okay, so uh, I guess before, before I move on and get into actually some of these things, I want to give a, a few announcements in regards to uh, what Paradigm is doing. Um, we, we actually have, uh, obviously, our e-learning sites that are already up. Uh, if you are a client, we built a robust system on the back end of our website that is uh, client access only. So if you are a client, make sure that you reach out to us and, uh, and get access to it. There is tons of information that we've worked on for, for years that's on that back end of the website. Uh, we also have a, a new iPhone app and also a Droid app. I think we have an Amazon app as well. Uh, the iPhone app actually just barely came out this week, and so uh, make sure you uh, go and download that. It has just a, it has a, a feed for our podcast, has a feed for uh, our blog, and also we can push announcements to you uh, and so forth, such as the amount of announcements such as this. All right, so let's, uh, let's kind of get into, let's get into some, of the, uh, some of the objective again. Uh, looking at the last you know seven seven years, um, I've had a I've, I've had a just an amazing experience with with clients. Um, it is it, it's it, I still wake up every morning and am so excited and, and happy about what I do because I I get to come into an office and and literally talk to people all across the country. We've done business in all fifty states. We've seen tons of different financial situations. And through these situations, we've been able to help clients uh, create solutions. Uh, but here's the thing. With the service that Paradigm Life provides, uh, the whole uh, banking system, it's, uh, it's, it's limiting. Now, what I mean by that is, isn't that there's no value associated with what we do. Because we, we consider what we do the core of anybody's financial situation. We've done business with multi-multi-millionaires. We've done business with uh, starving students. Uh, the principles are applicable in really any situation. However, what we've found is setting this up, although it's hugely beneficial to a family, there's still a lot of other things a family needs to set up or a business needs to set up or an individual needs to set up uh, in order to have a secure financial foundation. So this really becomes kind of the premise of the wealth standard is it's not just incorporating what our primary service is, but it's also offering solutions to the other aspects of your financial life. And there are a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting when we, we meet, when I meet with clients, when our, our team meets with clients, and you, you start to discover some of the, the major pain families are facing and, uh, and, and how it could have been avoided. Now, you're, you're never going to get through life unscathed, especially financially, but at the same time, there are so many things that could be put in place to prevent heartache and pain in the future. 
So a lot of the, whether it's financial products or strategies, uh, they are going to be associated with the well standard and in this curriculum, and especially on the e-learning site. And we're going to get to a lot of what that content is uh, a little bit later. Uh, but I, I have a, an incredible passion for, for the whole uh, banking and personal financing system that we, that we use. Um, I've used it for, uh, for since I started Paradigm, a couple years before I started Paradigm Life. And, uh, and I've used it to, uh, to invest. I've used it to build this business. Uh, I've used it to buy multiple cars, do things to uh, rental properties. Uh, and our clients have used the system to do fascinating, fascinating things. Uh, we have success story after success story, which we're going to share a lot of uh, within the wealth standard. And, uh, and so let's, let's kind of transition on and talk about um, maybe why, why you're here again and what my expectations are, uh, are of you so you can be assisting and helping build this curriculum for us. Um, so as I said before, you know, you, you're, you're our database, okay? You're, you've either done business with us or thought about doing business with us or maybe we're intrigued but weren't able to jump feet first. Uh, you, you maybe saw some sort of value if a person was younger, um, but there wasn't necessarily that value if uh, you were an older person. So looking at, uh, again, the strategies and the products that we use, they're applicable from, for a 20-year-old, even a, 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 I have a three-month-old and just did a, an insurance policy building up cash value. You can do it on an 80-year-old. We have clients that are in their mid-70s and mid-80s. Now, there are, there are different techniques and different things that need to be done with that demographic, but at the same time, the principles are applicable. So again, looking at where, where you are in your finances, uh, your authenticity, your transparency as to why you did what you did, why you didn't do business with us, uh, why you did maybe a little and didn't do as much as was recommended. Uh, that feedback is really important to us because that's going to help us really see uh, what individuals are looking for, what your issues are, what your problems are, and how we can effectively educate uh, the solution. Because looking at the, the issue at hand, we've come across the, the majority of American financial issues. Um, I, can, I can list them off, that would probably take the entire hour, uh, but I'm, obviously I'm not going to do that. So we see solutions, but being able to convey them to individuals is really where I feel the disconnect is. And that conveyance isn't because we're incompetent or don't know what we're doing, uh, it's just because of communication. So looking at uh, your feedback, it's going to be huge in being able to build this. Because looking, looking at all the different content that's going to be within this, this whole curriculum, uh, it is, it's really going to impact the lives of every, every situation uh, imaginable. And so your feedback, uh, giving us authentic responses is going to be, uh, is going to be huge. So again, the, the recorded videos both tonight um, and in the next, uh, next couple of months as we write, uh, write this book and create the e-learning program, all those videos will be housed on the YouTube, uh, on the YouTube channel of course, but also on the wealthstandard.com. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, let's let's move on a little bit. Um, so there's two there's really uh, two sections to the to the wealth standard that we're going to uh, that we're going to focus on, and it really has to do with with demographics and uh, and age. So let me erase this really quick and get into and get into that. All right. So what's What's really, yeah, what's really another great thing that I get to do daily is uh, I get to study my trade, study, study my craft, study the economy, uh, know what's going on financially in, in the world, in, in America. And uh, at Dentistry right now, we're, we're experiencing, uh, we're on the brink of the greatest wealth transfer in the, in the history uh, of mankind. Um, but I would also argue that we're, we're on uh, kind of a, a path of ignorance when it comes to financial education uh, and financial foundation. So looking at, uh, looking at kind of demographics and how I like to associate my understanding of where a person is in their financial life, we like to use the analogy of hiking up, up and down the mountain. So in a financial life, okay, there's, really, uh, there's really two stages. Okay? The first stage is going to be uh, the, building, the building stage. This is when you uh, are, accumulating, are accumulating wealth. Okay, you're hiking up the mountain. You're making an effort to earn money. You're making an effort to invest money. Uh, you put in the hours. You put in the time. You're trying to protect, but you're also trying to grow. And the objective is you don't want to do that 
forever. So the objective is to get to the peak of the mountain, and at the peak of the mountain is to back off on that effort and enjoy the savings and the growth of the assets that you didn't spend while hiking up the mountain. So this is going to be the first section of uh, the wealth standard. So over the next probably three, four months, as we build this e-learning program, uh, as we write the book, and as I talk about the technology in a little bit, uh, as we build a lot of that as well, it's going to be associated with the building phase of a person's finances. Okay, so the building phase is really really has to do with uh, the, the banking system, the personal financing system, uh, business financing, uh, investment financing, but it also has to do with other ways in which you can build your wealth, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so that's going to be the first stage. The second stage, which we're going to complete probably uh, second quarter or start working on, uh, is second quarter of next year, and this is going to be uh, the income. Income and legacy. Okay, and that's obviously focusing on the descent. It's focusing on what is the best way to prepare yourself for this stage of life. So, looking at again the, the whole principle uh, behind this type of planning, the same economic principles apply to the building phase, the same economic principles apply to the income and legacy phase, but there's different strategies, different tools different techniques. Now, one thing that we're also going to do kind of within uh, the framework of these two sections is we're going to talk about what's going on between these two, uh, these two generations. Because right now I feel within families there's this huge disconnect between those that are in this phase and those that are in this phase. Okay? But there is a, there is a dependence there. Uh, it, not a dependence financially, a dependence on communication. And I'll just give you a really brief example. Looking at income and legacy, most people when they look at legacy, it's how do I leave a legacy to my kids? How do I leave a legacy to my community? I, we're going to have some element of that throughout this kind of second, second phase. I guess I should probably put two there. <laughs> Uh, this, I mean, th this second phase is uh, is not necessarily going to deal with that. It's going to talk about you know legacy planning when it comes to estate planning. Uh, we have a really cool relationship with attorneys and so forth. I'm not I'm not referring to that. I think right now, looking at what's going to happen uh, between these two demographics is profound. Um, I was reading a study the other day that said that over 50% of baby boomers, those that are already in this phase, 50% are going to live with their children or are going to be dependent on their community. Why? Because there was not enough income. A lot of this has to do with health care. Uh, a lot of this has to do with rising expenses. A lot of this has to do with Medicare reform and Social Security reform. But right now, looking at the, uh, the dependence on these, you know, the, the mutual dependence on these two demographics, it's, uh, it is significant. So we're going to talk a lot about how to build kind of a family family foundation, not just one generation, but multi-generation, so that this doesn't have to happen, the, this statistic. Uh, and there's other statistics that are even more staggering that we're going to, that we're going to cite. Okay? So again, looking at this building phase, the, the well standard is going to be broken into two, two parts. The first part, again, is going to focus on building growth, protecting your assets, making sure you can get to the top of the mountain. Uh, right now, just looking at kind of our, our society, it is, uh, it's, it's really scary. Um, I was looking at some statistics and preparing for this, and, uh, and I was, I was kind of, I was kind of taken back. Um, one of the statistics that I looked at was, um, 70%, 70% of Americans have some sort of collection, debt collector after them. 70% of Americans. The other statistic that is, probably known to a lot of people these days, is uh, the student loan bubble. Uh, $1.2 trillion in student loans. A uh, million dollars in car loans was a statistic that came out recently. Uh, another statistic is a uh, million dollars, or eight, 900,000, or 900 billion dollars in credit card debt. Another statistic is uh, the average 401k balance is still under $100,000. So why are these statistics important with us really building uh, the first phase of the wealth standard? Well, it's important because in this day and age, we've been, we've been duped. Um, we've, been, we've been hustled. 
So let me write down some of these statistics. So 70% collections, um, one, uh, one trillion in student loan debt, 900 billion in, uh, in credit cards, and then we have one billion in car loan, or one trillion in car loan debt. The average 401k balance is still less than $100,000. So what do these statistics show? These statistics show that what we've been propagated for as long as we have is not working. Uh, the, the plans that we participate in or are told to participate in, uh, the market-based investing from a traditional standpoint is not working. The returns aren't working. Uh, looking at what we resort to for financial resources to make the purchases that come up that we're ill prepared for is going is going into debt. So right now it's kind of like Wall Street, the banking industry, has us in this in this conundrum. And so as I was thinking of this, I was actually I was actually thinking of a, a story that happened to me, uh, or something that actually happened to me when I was uh, when I was in high school. So when I was in high school, my my parents. Um, and I had a good relationship with my parents. I don't think this, I was punished because I was a bad child. My parents sent me down to the farmland of Tennessee during the summer. So the South is, the South is not a really nice place to live during, uh, during the summertime, especially if you're working outside. And so my uncle at the time was a professor at the University of Tennessee, and he worked in, this, in this, uh, the ag agricultural department. So they got me a job um, on this, you know, on this uh, experimental uh, corn farm, so I would cross, be, cross breed corn, and anyway, so I, I was down here. I was living with my uncle, living with my grandma, and uh, and I, I didn't have friends. Uh, it was super boring. So I worked, you know, obviously a regular shift, uh, and then I found this pool hall that was uh, that was near my grandmother's grandmother's house. And my friend, you know, friend back home in Connecticut, he. Uh, uh, he had a pool table. We played a lot. We didn't really, you know, know what we were doing, but we were we were decent at it. And so I go into this pool hall and you know just kind of messing around. And there were these kids there. And so I saw them, you know, out of the corner of my eye playing. You know, they were they were playing around and they really weren't that good at all. Uh, they were you know kind of scratching and just laughing and and kind of messing around. And here I was playing playing by myself. So one of the kids came up to me. I remember he was just really. And this was a number of years ago, but he was really really short. And he was like, "Hey, you know, we're we're kind of bored. Do you wanna, you know, do you wanna play a game? Play a game with us?" So I'm like, "Yeah, sure. That sounds good." So we, I played a game, and uh, he played the exact same way. He uh, he he, sh he shot. He knew how to shoot a little bit, um, but I I eventually won. Then he said, uh, "Let's let's. Do you have any money on you? Maybe we'll play we'll play for some money." And uh, I remember it was twenty bucks. And twenty bucks to me at that time was was a huge huge amount of money. So I'm like, yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds pretty good. And so we played again, played another game, and it was a little bit closer this time, but I, but I still won. And he's like, well, let's, maybe give me a chance to win my money back. And I said, well, let's, let's, do, uh, let's do 50 bucks. And that's all that I, that's all that I had on me. And uh, so as you can imagine, the third game that we played, um, I got Is I feel a lot of is is potential education and entertainers and Susie Ormans and David Box and Jim Cramers and and it 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 causes me to shake almost. But here's the thing: they're not on TV because they uh, because people aren't listening to them. They're not on TV because they sound ridiculous. They're on TV because people believe them. People believe what they're saying. They believe what they tell them to do. They create this emotional stir associated with, um, with their finances and push them into these just ridiculous type of strategies. And they cite incredibly ridiculous statistics, whether it's rate of return, um, whether it's uh, the market and average rates of return they're done there, and, and they, they just quote numbers off the top of their head. So my, so my question to you, in kind of looking at this, as we're kind of focusing all of our resources, focusing education on this build, I want to know what's so, what is attractive about, um, 
Susie Orman or, uh, or, or Dave Ramsey. Now, if Susie Orman, you know, if she maybe looked nicer, I could see why she would be attractive. But, you know, anyway, looking at the attractiveness of their content, of their information, of their uh, education, I, I want to know what is so attractive about it. Because I, e I even have clients sometimes that will, that will tell me, you know, I don't agree with uh, some of Dave Ramsey's stuff. But I agree with, I, I, or I, I don't disagree with some of his stuff. Um, but uh, um, but, I, but I, dis, I, I agree with some other things that he says, as far as getting out of debt and being frugal and so forth. And, uh, and so I can understand where he's coming from. But looking at the whole framework of that philosophy, it's all based in that emotion and mentality of, of scarcity. It's how do you, you know, not go and visit friends to save a hundred bucks. Uh, not to go out to dinner with your family or take your family on vacation uh, to save to save this money. Selling, I saw that there was a, one of my one of our friends of mine. He posted this thing on Facebook a couple months ago, and it was this ad in the classifieds that said Dave Ramsey is making me sell all my guitar gear. Now, of course, it wasn't making him do that, but his wife read the Dave Ramsey you know financial piece whatever and forced him to get rid of everything that he loved to do. So although they talk about these principles of being frugal, uh, of, of saving money and so forth, looking at the sacrifice and what that causes in the lives of, 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 uh, of people, I think is more destructive than helpful. So I want to know, you know your, your feedback in regards to why is this, why is this guy um, on multiple TV stations, on multiple radio stations? And same thing with Susie Orman. What do you find attractive in that? Okay. All right, so, so looking at, you know, obviously the statistics, uh, probably in one of the other sessions we're going to do, we're going to dive a lot into this. We're going to dive a lot into the strategy here. We're going to do some case studies as well. But right now, I'm just going to give you the framework of, of kind of how this first uh, part of the wealth standard is going to work. It's really to just identify where financial education comes from, um, who benefits from it really, um, how destructive it is, and then what are solutions uh, to avoid that uh, that catastrophe. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably uh, just talk a few more few more minutes on uh, uh, on some other things, just to kind of associated with uh, with what we're building, and then I'll talk about uh, the technology piece uh, that I'm really that I'm really excited about. Uh, then I'll probably open it up for questions. I mean tonight tonight is really tonight is really just kind of a summary. Of, uh, of, of what we're trying to do and explaining to you about you know the direction that we're going uh, trying to, to offer more comprehensive uh, advice or comprehensive services um, so that we accommodate you know multiple aspects of a person's finances uh, your feedback again is what's helping build this for us uh, whether it's the comments here the comments on the web page it's going to really help us know what you know what you found difficult to bite into as far as our, our services are concerned. And that again is going to help us kind of create the, whether it's the videos or create uh, uh, the different chapters, create the book and, and so forth. Okay? All right. So now let's, uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about technology. All right. So again, the wealth, and I'll kind of draw this up here again. The wealth standard. Okay, and remember, there's going to be uh, kind of two two parts. Okay, the first part is going to be uh, the building phase. Okay, and then the second part is going to be income and legacy. Okay, and that's going to be broken into uh, pretty much three. Three sources of information, I guess is the best way to, to put that. So the first source is going to be the, uh, the book. Okay, second source is going to be the e-learning program. I guess I'll just draw all these at the same time. And the second is going to be, the, or the third is going to be the tech. Put e-learning in here. All right. So the tech. So this is 
I think as I look back on the, the history of Paradigm Life, a, a lot of what is going to be built inside of this, uh, this technology is, is just a result of me seeing all sorts of uh, financial situations and looking at what, they, what families or businesses could have done to, uh, to avoid them. And so as I looked at, you know, as I looked at what to, to build here, I really looked at what I did personally to adapt to what I found as these flaws in a family's finances. And uh, so oftentimes when I have you know, personal clients, I will, um, you know, obviously I'll set up our primary service, I'll set up the core of their foundation, but then I'll go off and really talk about how I set, how I set myself up, um, what I did from an asset protection standpoint, um, how I position my reserves, um, how I position my investments, uh, who's on my financial team. And, and I did that, again, with just more, more personal clients of mine. Uh, and I you know, gave referrals to you know, different attorneys or accountants um, or other insurance professionals or investment professionals. Uh, looking, looking at that, I found so much value in be able to, being able to give that information. But I realized, again, this is just efficiency 101, uh, but I realized you know, if I were to create a business off of just referring people, uh, I would be in, on the streets and I wouldn't be able to refer anybody anymore. So I, I tried to figure out a way in which I could give a lot of this education, give a lot of this insight, give a lot of these strategies and tools um, with, without having to really meet with individuals. But also what I found, and this is intriguing, is, is uh, I found families or business owners that I would recommend a lot of these different services and how to create things, um, but they didn't do all of them as I've done kind of follow-up meetings and so forth. So that also bugged me because I realized if this step wasn't done or this step wasn't done, then that specific family would face the probability of going through what this other family that I had met with way past, you know, down the road um, or in the past, what they had gone through. And uh, so I, f I found it heartbreaking because oftentimes individuals really aren't encouraged or, or mo I guess motivated is a better word. They're really not motivated to make changes until there's enough pain that would warrant those changes. So with this technology, it's, it's to give a, a motivation, okay? Now, this may seem very silly to, to some of you, um, but we're basically, within this technology, gonna have some sort of uh, gamification attached to it. So for those of you who don't know what gamification is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fascinating, fascinating idea. Uh, because looking at technology of the last you know, two, three years, there is so many people that dedicate, I mean, if you're a business owner, you probably want to see what type of games your employees are playing on their computers because I guarantee if there's not internet site blockings, there are people on playing this game and this game and this game and obviously that's taking money out of your pocket. Um, so looking at this, this kind of craze as far as gaming is concerned, um, it has really just kind of absorbed people um, into this kind of natural human instinct, uh, instinct to want to achieve, to want to better themselves, want to get to different levels. So I'll give you one example and then I'll, I'll move on because I know I'm kind of rambling. Actually, you know, I'll back up. This whole thing, I'm not really, I, I haven't really outlined a lot of things to, to do this presentation. Um, really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just explaining what I want to do and trying to get, get your help to do it. Uh, these, are, these are just things and ideas that I've been you know, toying around with forever, and I just decided to get onto this live video and, and explain them to you. So if things kind of seem you know, a little disorganized or disoriented, um, I, I apologize. I know there's some out, some out there that love to be, uh, <laughs> that love to be on, on task, and, and, uh, and I'm sometimes not that, not that person. Okay, anywhere. Uh, I'm trying to think of, all right, so let's get into this whole gamification idea. Uh, when I first realized how profound this gaming idea was, is when I was listening to a podcast and it talked about this, this iPhone app. And I think it's actually a Droid app as well called Flappy Birds. So some of you may have played like Angry Birds, um, but this thing was, and I've never played it, but this thing was called uh, Flappy Birds. And the developer, it, this game became so popular, the developer started to get death threats because he wasn't able to develop new levels quick enough. There were people that were threatening to kill themselves because they couldn't get the next level of, of Flappy Birds. So again, this is this, you know, some, there's a population out there that's, you know, 
it's uh, kind of out there. But this is how powerful that idea is to, to really get to new levels, to, to build, um, to have things complete. So that's, so that's what I'm going to do with this whole piece of technology, is incorporate that idea. So the tech piece of it is going to be attached to, uh, attached to the e-learning. So when you go through our e-learning process and you, um, you know, engage, you, you do agree to give us information. Okay? So if you go through this e-learning program, you sign up for, uh, for videos. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to charge or not. We're probably not, probably right now in, in beta phase, we won't charge. Maybe eventually we will. But you'll, you'll input your data. Um, we'll give you our you know, kind of terms and conditions and privacy and you know, make sure that everything is fully protected. Um, but a part of giving us that data is uh, we're able to basically push it into this technology. And I don't know what we're going to call it yet, um, but essentially what it is, it's, uh, it's, your financial, it's your financial foundation. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to frame it as more or less a, a puzzle or a set of you know, different pieces. So looking at this, and we'll just call it right now kind of financial, financial foundation. I actually do think financial foundation is copyrighted or, or uh, trademark or, or, or whatever. Uh, so we can't use that. But essentially what it is, it's just it's going to push all of your financial data. So if you give us your, you know, your, uh, your name, your data, uh, date of birth, and kids you have, your income, your assets, uh, it's going to push a lot of that into this piece of, piece of technology. And what this technology is going to do, it's going to uh, break kind of break those uh, different pieces of your finances into more or less a, uh, a puzzle. Okay, so, and there's a lot of other pieces. These are just some of the pieces. I'm not going to give them, uh, give them all away. So looking at kind of what we consider foundational. And again, this comes from just, and I wouldn't say that I have, you know, many years of experience, but because of the nature of us doing business online, um, I, from the traditional advisor, um, I've probably done 10 times uh, in a year what, what they do just because we're able to, not, we don't have to go to people's houses and meet at their kitchen tables. We do webinars, we do uh, video conferences, phone calls with all over the country. So we're able to do a lot more uh, appointment volume than, uh, than, most, you know, than, most tr than most traditional people. So that gives us a tremendous amount of experience, but also we're able to peer into uh, the lives of individuals and see what they have as far as finances are concerned. We get to hear the stories of, of heartache and pain and what they had to go through um, when they didn't plan uh, effectively. So a lot of the pieces of this puzzle are just ultimately um, kind of safeguards to, uh, to protect yourself from these unforeseen circumstances. So let me kind of give you, let me give you an idea of, uh, of some of these pieces of, uh, of the puzzle. So the first, let's say, um, you know, as far as your e-learning is concerned, you you put in your, um, you know, your financial, we'll put financial questionnaire, okay, and those that the data of that financial questionnaire will either create um, a green inside of these pieces of puzzle, or it will create a red. So as you can imagine. The green is, uh, is what you have in place already. The red signifies something that you do not have in place. But in addition to that, what it's going to have is basically part of the e-learning that is going to educate you as to why it's important to have this piece of the puzzle complete or green. So let me give you examples of some of these, uh, some of these pieces. Um, so I'll do, let's do the first one. Let's say um, you have, uh, you have children. You are a, a family man. You have a wife and you have children, um, but you don't have any health insurance, okay, because you can't afford it or you don't understand it or your employer doesn't offer it or you're self-employed, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and surprisingly, we come across this all the time. I, I had a family very prominent. It was, it, was, it was surprising to me. Very prominent. Made a lot of income. Had a decent amount of assets. They had five children. Zero health insurance. Okay, nothing. Not even a catastrophic. Not a catastrophic policy. So, if that was this person's questionnaire, what it does, it shows you. Listen, you know, here's this is this is important. This is an important part of your foundation. Okay, now there'll be some you know sort of video. 
attach to that, which will basically show you, you know, what you can, um, what you can do to learn more, and uh, explains, you know, the private sector. It'll explain, explain Obamacare. Uh, we have some specialists um, and individuals that we feel qualified to to give this education. Not in our office, but you know, affiliated with our organization. Um, so that's that's one one instance. Let's do another one, which is um, let's do uh, child education. So this is a this is a big one because going back to you know this issue right here, legacy. Um, and I don't just say this because it's just come off the top of my head. I say this because this is what I. I know is, is going to happen unless changes are made. This idea of legacy, okay, families are giving up a tremendous amount of income, financial security, to pay for this. And what's going to happen is they are not, they're not going to realize the opportunity cost associated with, uh, with, with paying for education because it is going to hit them in the most important years. They're the years they can no longer go and work. And that is why this profound necessity for these two generations to communicate with one another. And we're going to have a lot of education associated with that. And that's one of the other pieces of, pieces of the puzzle. Um, but looking at child education, child education, there may be 529 plans set up. There may be some savings account, accounts uh, set up. But here, whether it's uh, green or red, the, the green is going to be associated with, do you know exactly, or you know, in a very you know, close proximity, what it's going to cost for your children, what the plan is, if you're going to uh, help them or not help them, um, how to look at alternatives and really build those alternatives, even from, even from a young age. Most families don't start to think about this until the child is you know, sophomore, junior year in high school. And that is the, one of the worst times to start planning for something like this. So how do you position yourself so that um, your, your child education accounts are set up appropriately, you're using the right vehicles, uh, you're funding them the right way, and uh, you also help your child understand what's going on here. There's going to be a section kind of in this puzzle uh, for family, family planning, okay? So family organi organization. Okay, so another another thing. Let's um, kind of give you a few other pieces of the pieces of the puzzle. Another thing that's going to be here is uh, your financial team. Financial team. Now, a financial team. There are a lot of members of the team. It's not like you uh, you have to go and you know uh, meet with them all of the time. You just need to identify and have some sort of uh, first off identify who they are and have some sort of relationship uh, with them. So a financial team doesn't have to be somebody that you know, uh, does business with you all the time. It just has to be someone that you identify as someone that can help in a specific area of your finances. So what are, what are some examples? Um, example could be a, uh, a mortgage, your mortgage advisor. Do you have a mortgage advisor? Okay, financial questionnaire or that input sheet will be able to house and organize uh, name, phone number, email address of this mortgage advisor. Okay, uh, this could be uh, an attorney. Okay, so you probably don't want to communicate with them very often because you'll get bills in the mail. But at least be able to identify who they are. And so, in the the circumstance where you uh, have a, a need for an attorney, you don't have to scramble. Scrambling is what gets people in trouble. Okay, you don't have to scramble. You can identify who that is. So, as far as an attorney is concerned, um, this could be, uh, you know, a family attorney. Uh, this could be a business attorney. It could be a real estate attorney. Uh, it could be um, uh, like an accident, accident type of attorney, gen general practice, etc. And also a estate planning attorney. Uh, another thing that'll kind of go into this foundation is uh, is an estate plan. Uh, and this is this is. If there was a part of all of this that I see a lack of the most, it's uh, it's it's with a family having estate planning in place. Um, it's amazing. Even extremely wealthy uh, individuals. Uh, what's the guy? What's the name of the guy? Phil, uh, Seymour Philip Hoffman or Phil? Oh, what's the guy? that was in Mission Impossible. 
Uh, anyway, a very famous actor that died of a jungle arrest a few few months ago. Um, his estate was a, a mess, and it really hurt his chil his children. Uh, just because typically when individuals do this, they don't know what they're doing. They just kind of sign up, uh, and some individuals do not have this whatsoever. And what that does is it causes chaos if something were to happen prematurely. So looking at again all of these all of these different areas of uh, of this puzzle of this financial foundation, there's going to be education attached to it. Okay, that's a lot of what this e-learning is uh, is going to be. It's going to help you identify, you know, what you need as a found what you need as a foundation. Okay, is your foundation secure? Are you missing anything? Okay, uh, let's see. Also here we could put in um, uh, your tier a tier analysis. So I'm not going to do a lot of uh, not going to do a lot of explanation because again tonight's just kind of a general general explanation of things. We'll get into this probably in some of the later um, later session later live sessions. Uh, but tiering your assets. So one of the things that I do personally is I, I tier my assets as far as the risk associated with them. And and the the idea that I got was uh, in relation to how banks are regulated to be set up. They have tier one assets, tier two assets, tier three assets, and those tiers of assets have specific scores associated with them. I guess you can say, uh, and it's relative to their um, to their risk. So, looking at again, I, I went through with with Paradigm. I went through 2007, 2008, 2009, and if people had this understanding here, if they had that, the, the heartache that could have been avoided. Uh, it's just, it's just, you know, it, it's it's profound to, to think about. So my association with, you know, what a tier that, what a tier asset is, what tier two asset is, uh, and not to, not to break the order, right? Because tier three assets and tier four assets are the ones that always kind of get people really giddy, okay? They get people excited, but those are the ones that bankrupt families and ruin families, cause divorces, etc. Now I'm not saying that tier three assets are bad to look at. Okay, because there are, there's, uh, there's a lot of times where um, those are very successful. However, there's no need to go to those tier three assets until you've built your other assets first. So this type of education is going to, uh, is going to be there. Uh, we're also going to have education on, um, and again, th this is going to have a section for you know, income and legacy as well, talking about um, you know, what the, the best way to create income, turning, turning the assets that you build on the mountain as you build as you climb the mountain as you put forth that effort and build your nest egg what is the best way to create income from that so a lot of the income side of things is going to be uh, is going to be here um, I put family organization there's a number of others I think we have like uh, 10 10 or so parts of uh, of this foundation so this is something else that we're going to build and remember I'm creating this isn't created okay this is kind of, it's up here right now, and it's kind of jumbled a little bit. So your participation, your feedback, your comments throughout these series of live videos is going to help build this, because I'm going to do videos on family organization. I'm going to talk about uh, the meetings that I've had with my kids and my wife and, uh, and my siblings. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, my financial team, how I have them set up, uh, how I communicate with them. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, you know health insurance. I'm not an expert in health insurance. Uh, I'm going to talk about estate planning. I'm not a super expert on estate planning. We'll probably have some attorneys come in and do videos with us. Uh, same thing with um, you know, child education. Uh, I'll, I'll explain how I've set my, my children up and how I do things with them and um, you know, building, building accounts for them and how they can use them as they become financially savvy. So a lot of this is basically going to be built with these live, uh, with these live sessions. And your feedback is, is really going to help us perfect the information perfect the education. Not to say that it isn't perfect right now, as, but as I said before, it's not necessarily the content that has value, it's the delivery of that content, it's the communication of that content. So I want to see kind of what you guys think, what your feedback is, and, uh, and you know, what, uh, what you don't understand or don't agree with, uh, and then I can help kind of position, position the education so that you do agree, agree with it, okay? All right, all right, let's move on a little bit. We have a few more few more things and I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be it um, all right so I'm actually going to open things up to um, some questions in, in just uh, in just a few minutes um, another thing too I guess I can kind of uh, explain associated with all of this 
is uh, is we're gonna we're gonna start doing. And this would be we've scheduled it toward probably mid or end part of September, but we're going to do a, uh, a new radio show. And it's actually gonna be it's a podcast. It's gonna be online radio, um, but we're gonna do it live. So it's gonna be live uh, every Friday. It's gonna be every other week. Uh, and I'm I'm not gonna host uh, all all the time. Uh, but a lot of my guys here, we're all going to kind of take turns. And we're not, you know, I think looking at our old podcast, and, which we've had running forever, you know, we really focused on just a couple of key key points and focused on really what, what we did. But we really didn't give credence to our, our financial philosophy and give credence to things that are happening in the economy and, and didn't necessarily have the context to talk about a lot of these, a lot of these other things. Okay, so that's what we're gonna uh, do with the with the radio program, which is gonna kind of extend a lot of this education um, into you know online radio. Um, one thing I, I do I kind of failed to mention is um, is who is this who is this for? And I touched on it briefly, but this is for everybody. Okay, this isn't this isn't for you know a wealthy wealthy uh, family or, or business owner or entrepreneur or investor. Uh, th this is for everybody, okay? And uh, and looking at the different aspects of this, uh, there's very little, if any, cost to setting these things up, okay? Uh, there may be some additional insurance that you didn't think you need, but you know we, we may have it on there as, a, as an option. Um, but it's something you should have you should have anyway and should budget for. Uh, but looking at a lot of these other setups, it's more just having an organization, and that's why we want to house all of this. And going back to my interaction with clients and, and saying, listen, here's how I have my finances set up. Here's, you know, here's what I'd like you to do. Talk to this person, talk to this person. Um, set this up, set this up. And there was an agreement there, but there really wasn't a, a ton of organization associated with how to get it all set up. And that's obviously the objective, uh, objective of all of this, okay? All right, let me see if I'm missing, let me see if I'm missing anything. All right. Nope, let's do some Q, let's do some Q and A. All right. Da, da, da. All right, I'm gonna bring a stool over here and uh, let me put a pull pull it up and go through some go through some of these questions. So and maybe you could just give feed you know, give feedback as well. So not necessarily not necessarily questions, but give feedback as far as um, what you think. Um, do you think it's a good idea? Do you think, um, like, what I would love to, uh, I'd love to give you feedback as far as the execution of some of these, uh, some of these things, I, I, as far as how we're doing these videos, or whether it's more valuable to do uh, webinars. Uh, what we're thinking for uh, for next time is uh, I'm going to bring in one of my guys, and we're going to start, you know, obviously with the section of building. Okay, going you know going up the mountain, the proper way to build, may kind of get into some tier, uh, the tiering of assets. Uh, but what what how I like to approach things is is problem and solution. And so one of the things I thought is you know with uh, with some of the problems out there, it's it's really the statistics that I sh that I showed and us using um, you know some of our software and calculators. Uh, in, in conjunction with all of this, so we'll bring a we'll bring a computer in here and kind of go through calculations live uh, and dispel some of the myths that are that are out there. Uh, that's another thing that we that we had toyed around with. But yeah, give me maybe give me some feed uh, give me some feedback here about uh, about what you think of the the idea and uh, and maybe some things that you would like to see incorporated into some of the education. All right, we have a few questions here. All right, all right. These are these are so the couple. We had a couple questions specifically about uh, the the insurance. So as you notice, I really I hardly even touched on the insurance, uh, and the reason why is because pretty much our entire uh, entire website is uh, and, and Infinite One Hundred One program is uh, is tailored toward toward educating. I'm, I'm not I'm not kind of skirting the question because I'm answering the question. But I would go go to our website and register for our e-learning program because a lot of the questions that are asked here um, were associate are, are associated with content and information education that are on that are on the website. Um, so this this question is: uh, When you take a loan, does the interest you pay go directly to your policy or to the insurance company through dividends? Okay, so again, this goes to kind of the core core of what we do. First off, 
the reason we feel that insurance is the core foundation of, of your finances is because it's worked for 200 years. Uh, it is based on uh, mathematical actuarial principles and, and certainty and guarantees that no other asset is associated, associates with. All their assets, all their investments are, are, really, um, are really structured to, uh, to, to incorporate risk. And typically the person that bears the risk is the one putting money into it. So looking at, the, looking at the policy, the policy is profound enough because of how it grows. Okay, so it's growing with uh, typically the eroders of wealth that all other assets have, which is fees and, uh, uh, and taxes. Okay, so looking at the policy, okay, building in your, building in your cash value, okay, you are paid, you are paid interest and you are paid dividends okay, every year. And here's the track record, because these have been paid for hundreds of years. What is it based on? It's not based on, hopefully, the insurance company makes money. No, these insurance companies always make money, because what are they doing? They're taking a huge pool of data, and they're figuring out when a person is going to pass away. Some people are going to pass away soon. Some people are going to pass away well down the road. And they know how to be profitable with this. So the beauty of setting up this type of account isn't because you just earn interest, but it's because you earn dividends because it's a mutual company. You own the insurance company. When they're profitable, money doesn't go into this, like, uh, this executive board that gets all of this money or these shareholders that gets all this money. This money is spread pro rata throughout all policy owners. Okay? So this in and of itself, this in and of itself, even if the loan didn't exist, which I'm going to address in a second, even if the loan did not exist, this would still be one of the best savings vehicles that's out there. And that's why major banks and corporations use this as a tier one asset. So now let's talk about the loan. So the loan, we'll put in here insurance company. The loan is, is given to you by the insurance company. It is money, it's their money. Now, your money is part of their money. You've given them money, but millions of other people have given them money. So part of their general account, part of their, you know, their resources are allocated to people that own this policy. And they will give you a loan against, they will give you a loan against the cash value, okay? you will pay them back with interest. That interest goes to the insurance company. Okay? This is working independently. Okay? This is earning interest. It's being paid dividends. They give you a guaranteed line of credit against the policy. Okay? When you make payments, and that, those payments include interest, those go back to the insurance company. So that's another question. Or that was an answer to the question. <laughs> That's a good question. Okay, I'll answer. I'll answer a couple. Um, so when will when will we get the specifics of the of the account? So um, so this this account the specifics are are all like I said they're all on on our on our website. Uh, you can go and, and register for free. We also do free consultations and we walk through uh, a webinar and a screen share and we go through illustrations. We go through data. We give hypotheticals, and then we give actual situations according to who you are, how old you are, the money you put in, and so forth. Um, so the best way, I think, to, to really have an answer to that question is, uh, is to meet with one of our, one of our advisors. Um, if there's no cost to that at all, uh, you, you call up, they schedule a time, you get on a webinar with them, and they kind of walk you through the mechanics. But as I said before, we have a whole free platform that's on our website, so www.paradigmlife.net. And it's the Infinite 101 program. So you register for that, and when you register, you're given access to you know 20, 30 hours of uh, of education, and everything as far as the mechanics is on there. Uh, if I open a policy in an LLC, are the payments tax deductible? Uh, and that is a no. So looking at looking at the IRS, I, I, the reason why they have so many uh, sections of the tax code is because people are always trying to figure out ways to get around it. So looking at an LLC, 
Um, there are circumstances where premiums are deductible, but it's mainly term insurance, which covers key employees. Looking at a permanent, permanent policy, because it's tax-free growth, tax-free withdrawal the basis, tax-free death benefit, they do, there's no way to deduct the premiums. Okay? Everybody's tried, and uh, it's, it's not possible. So there's several sections in, in the code that, uh, that represent that. All right, any further on the tech side of the equation? Uh, like I said, we're, we're building that. So uh, as we kind of get into the tech uh, and get into that application, um, your, your feedback is going to be really important to how we, how we build that. Uh, and then I guess kind of part of that question was, will you have access to Truth Concepts uh, online? So the answer to that is, is, uh, is no, because Truth Concepts is uh, it's a software program that we use. The objective and mission of that software is to prove or disprove any financial concept. Okay, any financial concept that's out there. I didn't develop it. It's really the foundation of how we build cases, how we build all of what we're building. Uh, but that is a, it's a software by Todd Langford. And uh, traditionally, he, you can purchase it yourself. And he has a whole training you can go to in Houston. But because of all the things that that, that software does, uh, you, the, the training associated with it is much more valuable and important uh, than the software itself. Now we will have some tools to calculate within that little program. Uh, one of the things that I was toying around with was having like a retirement ready calculator. And the retirement ready, and again, it's not like a well, you're yes or no. I mean, there's gonna be you know, sub some subjective things associated with it because you can never 100% know. But we'll have some variables in there so you can kind of look at um, you know, if you are on the right track or not given the variables of uh, time, uh, your asset base, rate of return, uh, and the income level that you want during, uh, during your retirement. So we have some calculations like, like that. There's also gonna be calculations put into the program. So one thing that you know, this is gonna calculate is, is tier, tiered assets. So tiered assets, you may have 90% um, you know, of your assets in a 401k. 401k is not a tier one asset because typically a 401k is all associated with securities uh, and it's locked up, so there's zero liquidity, and you have to pay taxes and penalties um, to, to liquidate it. So it's not considered a tier one asset. Tier one assets has to have liquidity associated with it. So if you have all your money in tier two, it's going to calculate and have some of idea of you know where the balance should be. Okay. Um, would it be okay? Let's see. How is uh, this dividend paying whole life policy compared to indexed uh, universal life? All right, this is another very touchy, touchy subject. Um, in, Index Universal Life is just a new, it's a new, uh, it's a new financial product. And I say new, it's been around for about 20 years or so. It's new because most insurance products are hundreds of years old. Um, Index Universal Life is a for-profit product. Okay, so what that means when an insurance company creates products, disability insurance, term insurance, long-term care insurance, uh, any insurance that an insurance company creates, when they build that product, they do not build it to lose. Okay? If they did, they'd be out of business. Okay? And that is not the nature, of course, of an insurance company. So looking at Index Universal Life, it's basically a policy that creates the illusion that you're in the market, where you're not in the market at all. There's a cap associated with growth. So if the market does well, you're capped on growth. And there's a floor associated with losses. So if the market tanks, you're protected from downside losses. But as you can imagine, insurance companies are genius. That's why they you know, sit in these back rooms and create these crazy products, okay, is because they're trying to figure out a way to make it attractive to the individual, but then also make a profit. So if you look at the caps and floors and the control they have over those caps and floors, you look at the history of the S&P and most major indices, and you look at caps and floors and the costs associated with the policy, and the yield, average yield, is less than uh, whole, whole life, less than a dividend paying whole life. And it makes sense because dividend paying whole life, you're paid a dividend because you own the insurance company. So all the profits get paid to you. And those profits include the profits associated with index UL. Uh, another thing is, the, there are so many changes 
to, to index UL. Uh, there's there's a class action lawsuit that just went out with uh, with a company called F and G because in a num number of issues. Um, but they reduce caps for people, you know, in the middle of the game from you know like twelve percent to eight percent. So anyway, there's they're just products that you have no control over. The risk is is all on your shoulders, and just the performance is. Um, it's not going to be as high as a, as a whole life policy, even though it illustrates that way. But it illustrates, you know, the, the wrong way. And uh, and we have a whole I have a whole video where I analyze all of that um, on our uh, on our client page. So if you're a client of ours, then uh, you would have access to that. But if you if you email, um, there's a lot of people on this. I don't really want to give out my my email. If you email. Uh, Info, email info at paradigmlife.net and put in the subject line indexed UL Patrick. Um, I'll make sure tomorrow I send that video to you. And it's about a half an hour video and it kind of goes through the mechanics of what I just talked about. So, all right, the course, okay, so here's, a, here's some good comment. Here's the first, first good comment. Um, not to say the other questions weren't good because they were awesome questions, but this is, this is a good comment. Uh, the course could use lots of examples of how to creatively use uh, the, the concept that we teach. And, uh, and, and that is, I think what's cool about just human nature is we associate ourselves with other people that go through the same predicaments. And that's, why we, that's why everybody loves movies. Because when you're watching a movie, you, you, you know, psychologically become part of the movie. And that's why it's so, uh, it's, it's, you know, certain movies are so so profound, especially you know hero-based movies like Gladiator and The Patriot and Cinderella Man and Forrest Gump. The idea behind somebody going through adversity and overcoming—it's such a profound message. Uh, not because of the message itself, but because so many people can associate with it. Because everybody goes through adversity, and everybody knows what it feel like uh, feels like to get through that adversity. So, looking at examples, we're going to be really big on that, and we're going to show uh, family situations. We're going to show. I'm going to talk a lot about my situation. Uh, we're going to talk about um, you know things that happened to specific families. Now, I'm not going to mention the families, of course, but we're going to talk about not how to necessarily use the banking system, but we're also going to talk about how to incorporate you know just a sound financial foundation. Um, but another cool thing too, which which is the family side of things. So there's a lot of the guys in the office, a lot of uh, uh, the team here um, have children, and uh, a couple a couple of us uh, have children that are at, of an age. Uh, that where we've taught them how to use how to use the banking, the, the, this whole idea of fi uh, family financing, and uh, so there's one guy, uh, one guy Ryan, and he's going to co probably come on here. We'll do a session which talks about um, his his kids and his son specifically. I think he's like seven or eight. Um, he really kind of took the reins with uh, with knowing that there is an access to capital within the family, and he's found ways to buy an iPad, to buy an Xbox. And he creates all these different ways in which he can help the family, um, obviously with you know remuneration from you know from uh, from the family to afford making payments to the iPad loan or the bike loan or the Xbox loans. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, a lot about family. This is really important, kind of going back to the interdependence that the two major generations have, which is the baby boomer generation that is that is in and approaching retirement, and also the uh, the X generation and Y generation that are coming up the mountain. And a lot of how family dynamics can be created, family meetings, um, family understanding, and, and so forth. So not only will we talk about kind of a, you know, creative ways to use banking and when to use it, the appropriate times to use it, uh, but it's also just to make sure that all other parts of the financial foundation are, are secure. Um, all right. How is this? So this is a good. This is a good question as well. And and I did my best at kind of tying this together. Uh, but how is this tied to what Paradigm Life currently does? So Paradigm Life is always going to do this. Uh, our our main service is is, is this concept. I, I using examples, using math, using calculators. We can literally show that this is superior to anything that you could potentially that you could possibly do. And and that's where we focus the majority of our education. But my point is. It is not the full foundation of your of your family. Um, looking at you know how to incorporate the plan, there are so many ways to do it with your family, with your kids. There's ways in which you can use it for your your children's education. But looking at other aspects of your finances, it's, it's kind of like um, if you like, let's say one of the parts of the financial for the foundation that we talked about was health insurance. So let's say that you didn't have health insurance 
And I'm not, I'm not trying to peddle health insurance. I'm just trying to make a point that if you don't have a secure foundation, then setting up the system is for naught. Because if you had a health incident and you weren't covered and something happened, it could bankrupt you. And it also probably make, it, make the policy unaffordable and not able to be maintained. So that's an example there of just making sure all aspects are covered. Uh, but it also could be to uh, the, the, having your financial team. So I was talking to uh, a woman who's, who's a financial advisor, and she's a financial advisor for a number of years and, and educated everyone, but her husband died. And when her husband died, her, com her logic was completely gone. Her ability to make decisions, gone. So obviously having a financial team in place to assist you in those circumstances, it is going to help you maintain the, the banking system. It's going to help you maintain a lifestyle. Okay? Because obviously a financial foundation is ju not just the, the banking system. A financial foundation involves so many different aspects. And so the idea behind the wealth standard is to kind of continue the conversation as far as the banking system is concerned, but it's also to incorporate a, f a fully secure financial foundation. So that's, uh, hopefully that answers answer your question. All right, my computer's about to die here. So, and I think we are an hour and 20 minutes into this. So, uh, with that being said, we'll probably, uh, we'll probably end tonight. Um, I, appreciate, I appreciate the feedback. It'll take us probably a couple days to get the video on, uh, on the wealthstandard.com. Uh, make sure you go check that out. Make additional comments. And, uh, and then we'll announce the next, uh, the next video. It'll probably be in a couple of weeks. And in that video, we're going to get into meat and potatoes. Today was just kind of getting your mouth watered or mouth watering and uh, getting excited for some of the content that we're going to create because it's, uh, it's going to be really awesome. And, uh, and like I said, if you can make it, great. If you can't, everything will be recorded and uh, you can go and watch it at a later time on, on the website. Uh, for those of you, it sounds like there's a, a lot of just kind of general questions about what we do. As I mentioned in the beginning, the objective of sending this out wasn't for like a you know, it wasn't to, to generate business per se. It was to, uh, to get kind of clients and people that are familiar with the concept, get your feedback about kind of some of the things that we're going to be developing. Uh, but it does look like there are individuals that are somewhat new and have, uh, have some basic questions about what we're doing. Uh, since that is the case, our, we built a, a free e-learning program on our website. And there, um, it answers a lot of the questions that were asked in a lot more detail than I'm able to provide uh, here. So make sure you go to our website and, uh, and register for that. And uh, again, it's www.paradigmlife.net. Uh, for those of you who are clients that don't have access to uh, the, the client section, uh, make sure you email your, uh, uh, your strategist and advisor and let them know because there's a lot of awesome content on there. And we also built an e-learning section for real estate investors, how to use a lot of this, a lot of this uh, associated with real estate. Uh, so make sure you call us and email us for access to that as well. So, all right, everyone, I'm going to call it a night. I appreciate you uh, being on, and we will talk to you next time. Thanks again.